and welcome to this match review for Newcastle's victory over Southampton on the opening day of the Premier League season. Now, obviously, unfortunately, I was unable to stream it, which is unfortunate, but I did watch the replay without knowing the results, so I was immersed. And we're going to talk about a few things. There's a few things to talk about. I'm going to have the sections listed in the description with timestamps for if you want to look at certain things, the red card, the goal conceded, or whatever. We're going to start off with just talking about the first 20 or whatever minutes before the red card, because the red card ruined the effect as they typically do. I think it was a pretty evenly contested game in the first 25 or whenever the red card was. And I think we may have edged it very slightly in who was the better team. I think it was fairly even. I think obviously we were doing what we do and try and playing out from the back, playing through the lines. And then Newcastle were basically picking up the scraps that we left to them basically by giving the ball away as you typically do when you're playing out from the back against a good opposition. But I think for the majority, we actually played pretty well. It was calm, it was composed, it was quality. We did struggle a little bit sometimes getting out. It was sort of good from the defensive to the midfield and then the midfield to attack was sometimes lacking, sometimes it was fine. But I think for the majority, it was pretty good from us. Definitely better than what I expected going into this. I thought Newcastle would be all over us, really. And I think that showing sort of shows that we can compete. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit later as to why we lost. But I think we can compete. I mean, Newcastle are a Champions League challenging side. So if we can sort of compete with them, you'd assume we'd be able to compete with teams that are going to be more around us at the bottom of the table. But it's a good start, good showing in terms of performance that first 20 odd minutes, whenever it was. But let's move on to obviously the first main topic of this video, the red card. Now we're going to watch it. And then obviously you've probably seen replays, you've seen it on Twitter, whatever, but we're just going to watch it again. Hopefully I don't get copyright striked, please. It's bloody educational. So we're going to watch it through. I'll give my thoughts just so we have a bit of context. Now this is what set it all off. As we know, uh, Brereton Diaz is a bit of a, I don't know what to call him, a, a maniac? I mean, he's doing some weird shit like this. I mean, that is just unnecessary and stupid. Clearly, he's been frustrated by the game or whatever and just lashed out, which is dumb, by the way, because that's just a yellow card. Like, if, if Shah doesn't react, it's just a yellow card. Cool, you've got a yellow card for absolutely nothing. You know, it's just stupid. Shah pushes him, which I think anyone on the planet would. I mean, he just got bunted from behind for literally no reason. Now, as we play it frame by frame stuff, lads, frame by frame stuff. As we play it through, there's like the slightest bit of it's like this. This is this is I'm Brereton Diaz. This is his, as this is his head. Ah, you know, it's pretty tragic. I'm going to be honest. Even as Saints fan, it's fucking tra- It's just embarrassing. It is embarrassing. But it's not a surprise because that's how football is. You see people falling on the floor, rolling around after literally anything. So it's not a surprise that he's done it. It's more just disappointing because it's just unnecessary. And, and you know, the reason they do this is because the refs, as you see, are stupid. He obviously got sent off, if you didn't know. Shah got sent off. Brereton Diaz got a yellow. In reality, the correct decision is both of them get a yellow. Brereton Diaz for the stupid challenge he did. And then Shah for sort of pushing and, and getting in his face, which is a yellow as well. So it should have been yellow for both players. Never a red in a million years. Anyone who says it is, is just dumb. That is my opinion. You can have your opinion. But it is what it is. But it's not a red ever in my book, ever. If that had happened the other way around, I would have been annoyed if it got given a red. Because again, it ruined the game. It changed the game in a boring way. What it was was Newcastle went, well, we're down to 10, especially after they scored. We'll talk about the goal soon, Alex McCarthy. As soon as they scored, got into half time. Second half, it was just, you know, as you would. You got 10 men, you're leading 1 0, you're up against it. You're just going to sit, right? That, obviously. And you're going to maybe hope that an Isaac or a Gordon or whatever can get in behind and score a goal. Just hoping to use the pace. And then as Southampton are, we can't break that down. We ain't got the quality for that. And you can see it again here. I mean, there's absolutely barely any contact. It's never red. That's simple. Done and dusted. Not a red. Bad decision. But welcome to the Premier League, Saints fans. We're back to absolutely even worse officiating. Uh, what, what a day. And now it's time for the Alex McCarthy special. Now, as Southampton fans, we all know, I doubt there's one person on this planet that probably said Alex McCarthy can be our starting keeper in the Premier League. We all know, especially the way we want to play, which is playing out from the back, being calm and composed, he is quite literally the worst at that. He is dreadful under pressure. He has no clue what he's doing, and he cost us a goal. Because at this point, they're down to 10 men. They're down to 10 men. We've been starting to really dominate the game because they're down to 10 men. 
You know, like, what are you doing? So now I'm going to I'm going to be really honest. I'm not a professional footballer. I never made as a professional footballer, right? Injuries, mate. Injuries was the reason. Alex McCarthy here. As you can see, you've got, I think that's Harwood Bellas. You've got, I think, Sugawara just sort of coming into frame. He is completely open. Now, as you know, he's pressing Bednarak. Joelinton is not, they're down to 10 men. They're not going to go man for man pressing like crazy. But he's pressing him. So he's out of the game. Stevens, obviously out of the game. Walker Peters is a stretch. Downs is in Bednarak space. He's not an option. Can you ping it to Rebo? Maybe. Are you Allison? No, so probably not. But these are the options here. Now, when this plays through, as you can see, McCarthy is this. When he receives the ball from Stevens, he's this. He's not looked once that way. Because if he did, he'd know, hey, I can just play it to, to Harwood. I can try sweep it to, to Sugawara. But no, he's gone, I am looking this way. I can see the Newcastle players coming at the corner of my eye. I just got to kick it. Well, if that's the reason, right? If that is the way you're thinking, hoof the bastard. The, the issue I always have with sometimes when, when teams play out from the back, and obviously we had it last season, you can play out the back. You can be calm, composed. That's fine. But sometimes you just got to hoof it, man. And that was a prime example of if you're not going to pass it that way, you send it to bloody Narnia. And as you know, like, what the hell is that? What on God's green earth is that? God did not make humans to make those mistakes, mate. Jesus Christ, that's a sin. Send him to hell. <laughs> okay, let's not, go too, let's not go too far. I'll take that back. I'll take that statement back. But Jesus, brother, who are you passing to? Like, honestly, there's... Stevens is here. Bednarak is here, Walker Peters is here. That's, believe it or not, I don't know if you knew that, McCarthy. He's not a Southampton player. Different colours, maybe. Colourblind wouldn't work because they're not wearing stripes. So that was my arguments out the window. But like, Jesus, <laughs> come on. And then obviously, it's a piece of piss from here. I don't know if I can show the goal. I'm just going to leave it like this. Well, you can all imagine what happened. It hit the back of the net, Joel Linton scored. And at this point, it's sort of like, we're on top. We were, we were pretty... Decently on top, not like a crazy amount, but a little bit on top before the red card. Then we get the red card. Now we're fully on top. We've fully got this is ours. We have to win this game. And then we give them a goal. We give them a reason to just sit everyone behind the ball. Because if it goes into halftime, Nilu, they're not going to be 100% defensive. They're going to still think maybe we can get a breakaway. Maybe Izak can get it behind. Maybe we'll give them more support. Maybe we'll try and score a goal. But when you're up 1 0, you've got 10 men. You're just going to park and hope for the best. And then if they score, it's like, ah, oh, well, we'll take a draw. And then if you lose, it's like, ah, oh, shit, we'll just go for it. But because it's 1-0 and not nil all, it's completely different. Now, this was the main Southampton chance. I mean, this should have been a goal. But I can't really blame the finishers. I think the defending from, I believe it is Tino, is absolutely incredible. So as the ball's played in, Brereton dummies it, which is fair. I mean, he could go for goal, but he noticed Adam Armstrong is completely clear. But the problem is, I do believe Adam Armstrong was expecting him to shoot it. So that's why his shot's sort of scuffed. So he scuffs his shot, obviously, cleared off the line, brilliantly done. And you're thinking, someone's got to tap it in. Someone's got to be there. And it was the villain of St. James's Park, Brereton Diaz, who it fell to. And I mean, from here, you're thinking there is no possible way, unless he absolutely scuffs it, that it's not going to go in. But it is brilliant defending from Tino. Absolutely just gets big and just hopes for the best. And I mean, he's clearly prayed before the game because that's a miracle. That's unbelievable defending. And honestly, like we'll talk about man of matches, but he would, I was surprised he didn't get it, to be honest. Him and Joel Linton, I think, were the best players on the pitch for Newcastle. But that's basically that for sort of what happened in the game. Obviously, we had a few more chances, but nothing too special. I mean, that was our main chance to sort of get level. Obviously, we saw McCarthy's mistake. We saw the red card. Obviously, let me know your thoughts on, on what happened in the game. But I think overall for the 90 minutes, we played well. We played fine. I can't say we deserve a win. I can't say we deserve a draw because then we would have won a draw. You know, it's one of those things. I'm not going to say we deserve to win when we've missed from six yards and we've given them a goal. How can you deserve to win or deserve to draw when you don't score against 10 men and you concede against 10 men? I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. But anyway, I think it was a decent first showing from us. I think we'll get better. Obviously, a few more signings would be beautiful. A keeper. A keeper, please, pretty please, would be fantastic. But moving on to, I'm going to talk about the new signings. Um, we could talk a little bit about Amoa Mayo and Dibbling. I thought Dibbling, they didn't get into the game as much. I thought Amoa Mayo was a lot more direct, attacking the fullback, trying to get a shot away, get a cross away. I thought he was good. 
Dibbling was okay, but again, it's a difficult game to sort of jump into because you just got the ball and you're thinking, what am I supposed to do with 10 men behind the ball? So it's a little bit difficult, especially for a young player. Not much experience in the Premier League, of course. But I think they did fine. Those two were fine. If we're talking about new signings, Sugawara, brilliant. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, maybe signing of the season, honestly. Fantastic from him. And I know people got upset that he got subbed off. And in my opinion, it made sense. I mean, Walker Peters was also brilliant as well. Walker Peters, if you'd put them on a, on a scale, Walker Peters is better, right? And maybe Sugawara will outshine him eventually. Who knows? You know, he's only recently signed. But Walker Peters has been like our best player for a couple of years. So Walker Peters obviously going to stay on the pitch. We've gone more attacking as we should. We're down 1-0 against 10 men. He brings on a Dozy who's a direct winger to try and attack. I mean, Walker Peters was inverted. Then you had Suguara just overlapping, which is fine. But a Dozy is a very direct winger. He's going to try to beat his man. And he beat his man a few times. But again, it's the Adozi thing. The end product. Nowhere to be seen. But I understand the sub. Now, if he had made that sub against 11 men, I would have been hitting my head against the wall thinking, what the hell are you doing? But with 10 men, it made sense in my opinion. Obviously, you may be different. But I think Suguara was fantastic. The other new signings, Berrett and Diaz, I mean, I don't like his antics. I'm not that, I, I'm very like, I could say I'm old fashioned, but like I'm not old. Well, <laughs> yes, I guess, but to some maybe. But I like the physicality of football. Like that was sort of the, the you know, get in there, smash the bastard, <laughs> get the ball as well, obviously. But then it's just like when people do that sort of thing, and like you've seen it many times over the years, the refs getting conned left, right and centre. It's just frustrating to see. It is. Like I don't want my big, like he's like 6'1 or 6'2 or something, striker or wing or whatever, going down after a slight head touch and then going, it's just, it's not for me. It's really not for me. I don't like it. So that sort of put him down a little bit in, in my like of him. In terms of his performance, I think he was fine. I think he should have scored when Tino blocked it. He had a header that he should have done better with. He got on target. It is what it is. New signing, but I don't like the antics, which is what I would definitely say about Brereton Diaz. Now, obviously, Cameron Archer joined like yesterday or the day before the game or whatever. I thought he was useless. I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be too harsh because obviously it's a difficult game to get into when you're not a tall player. You know, when they're parking the bus at, with 10 men, you got, you're coming on 15 minutes left, you know, you're trying to create something. But I think he was utterly useless. Um, now, we'll see how he develops. Obviously, he's just literally joined. I don't want to be too harsh because, obviously, players take time to get comfortable with the system, understand the system, understand what Russell Marner would want from him, and obviously, play him to his strengths. Today was not to his strengths at all. He had zero influence, and I sort of misplaced about five passes, and he touched the ball about six times. So it wasn't the greatest performance, greatest debut, but... Hopefully in the coming months, he'll get better, get used to the system, Russell Martin get more out of him, which is fine. I'm not upset about the signing or anything like that. It's just that he really didn't have an impact in the slightest. But that's that about new signings. I know we're apparently signing some Portuguese midfielder. I ain't got a clue about it, so I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> I, I, maybe it'll be announced by the time this comes out. I ain't got a clue, but I've never seen him play football. He could be the next Messi. I don't know. We'll never clue. But I think the takeaway from this game is pretty obvious. Keeper. A keeper would be fantastic. Absolutely brilliant a keeper would be. And every Saints fan on the planet says exactly the same thing. In terms of man of the matches, I give it to Joel Linton or Tino. Either one. I think Tino did get the better of Adozi a majority of the time. But I think Adozi did cause him a lot of issues. But I think that block alone was brilliant. And then obviously Joel Linton's goal. A lot of height in the box. Winning headers. I think either of those two deserve man of the match. In terms of Southampton man of the match... I'd probably go for Aribo, Sugawara, or Walker Peters. I think those three were the most influential. I think Aribo was good at holding the ball up, bringing it forward. I thought Walker Peters and Sugawara gave everything in that first half. They were excellent. Walker Peters inverted, overloaded the midfield. Then you had Sugawara. Some of the crosses were excellent. Taking on his man, beating his man, getting the ball into the box was brilliant. And I think we have a really exciting fullback there. I'm not going to lie. I'm liking the look of Sugawara. He's sort of like the perfect fullback in a three at the back system. One that is just so good attacking but is solid defensively as well it just has that real attacking quality where you can just take people on and get the ball in the box which is brilliant and also obviously the system exactly how i predicted that lineup is literally my prediction <laughs> just saying i must know things i think that system will work sometimes maybe not depending on how the other team's set up but i think away from home that that formation will work 100 of the time more
more defensive security. You don't need as many attackers away from home because typically the home team will be more front footed so you can sort of use the space in behind. It's not going to be like the championship where teams would just park and hope for the best. So I think the system looks pretty good and I think with a few additions it could look even better. But that's going to be my review of the Newcastle game. Let me know your thoughts and whatnot. Obviously, we play Nottingham Forest next. Hopefully, our first win, first goal, first three points for Russell Martin in the Premier League. And I will be there to watch it with you. And then the curse of me will come in and then we'll lose 6-0 or something. But I hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you boys in another day, another time.